The inconsistencies of a Seattle Mariners superstar. Let's talk about it. Julio Rodriguez made his MLB debut back on April 8th, 2022 versus the Minnesota Twins. And from that point on, he became a superstar in Major League Baseball. He would hit 284 that year with a 132 WRC plus on top of a 5.8 war, 28 home runs, and 75 RBIs, which would eventually lead him to win AL Rookie of the Year. Julio Rodriguez had a fantastic rookie year at only the age 21, and everyone would hope he would just continue to get better and better and eventually hopefully become one of the faces of baseball. Now when 2023 rolled around, Julio Rodriguez hit 275 with a 128 WRC plus. He matched his war from the year prior with a 5.8. He had 30 32 home runs and 103 RBIs. So offensively, he did get better. Fast forward one more year and you're in the year 2024 where the Seattle Mariners are struggling to get a playoff spot and Julio Rodriguez, their superstar, is only hitting 268 with a 110 WRC+, a 3.1 war, 16 home runs, and 54 RBIs. So for this video, we're not going to be really talking much about the 2022 season as that was one of his best seasons overall from start to finish in my personal opinion. And today we're going to be going in some of the statistics and, to, and behind 2023 and 2024 struggles in terms of his inconsistency. There are a lot of Mariners fans watching this video saying Julio Rodriguez was never a superstar. He will never be a superstar. And I'm going to have to completely disagree with that statement. In 2024, this is definitely his massive down year compared to 2022 and 2023. But those numbers are superstar numbers in those two years. And just in case some of you forgot that Julio Rodriguez and Bobby Witt Jr. are the only two players ever in Major League history to have 75 plus home runs and 75 plus stolen bases in their first three years in Major League Baseball. The only two ever. And last time I checked, Bobby Witt Jr. is a superstar. Nonetheless, this year he is definitely having a down year for the Mariners, and that is one thing going forward that he needs to figure out, and that is consistency. But what do I mean when I say consistency? Am I talking about clutch? Am I talking about putting together a full season? My main point is that he needs to put a full 162-game season together. Now, for starters, he's not going to probably play in every single game, but he needs to start just as good as he finishes, and you're going to have slumps. This is Major League Baseball, but this is the problem with the consistency, and I'm going to tell you guys that right now. So in 2023, where the Mariners were a game out of a playoff spot last season, Julio Rodriguez started the year extremely slow, and that's where the sophomore slump comments came in. In his first 39 games last year, he hit 216 with almost a 30% K rate, a 94 WRC+, plus, 20 RBIs, and 7 home runs in his first 39 games. So as you guys remember, a lot of Mariners fans were freaking out, saying Julio Rodriguez, you know, is he going to suck this year, whatever, nonetheless. And then you move to the next 88 games of the season where he hits 316 with only a 23% K rate, a 150 WRC+, plus, 17 home runs, and 67 RBIs. Now at this point, all Mariner fans are saying, Julio's back, Julio's legit, he's fine, no need to worry. Now you move into the month of September, which was the biggest month of the Seattle Mariners season last year. As we know, like I said, they were a game out of the playoffs, and this is how Julio performs. So in 28 games in the month of September last season, he hit 233 with a 24.4% K rate, 16 RBIs, a 110 WRC+, plus, and 8 home runs. Now at 110 WRC+, plus, and 8 home runs, and 16 RBIs in one month is not bad, but hitting 233 and also adding to over 2% to your K percentage in the month where your team needs you to put them on their back... That is not good. Now, when you fast forward to this season, Julio Rodriguez continues to be the inconsistent star that we all know he is. So in his first 44 games this season, he hit 266, which you look at and say, that's pretty good. That's consistent in terms of batting average. And then you go, he has a 28% K rate, a 93 WRC plus, 13 RBIs, and only two home runs. Again, for a superstar, two home runs for, through your first 44 games is simply not enough. Now you proceed to the next 66 games where Julio Rodriguez is still hitting for pretty good average at a 259, but still has a high K rate, but he dropped it by about 1.1%. And then he has a 105 WRC plus with 25 RBIs and nine home runs. So again, an improvement, but definitely not superstar level. Now, all of a sudden, Edgar Martinez walks in the door and Julio Rodriguez has figured it out again. He is now hitting 305 with an 18.3% K rate, a 155 WRC plus, 16 RBIs, and five home runs since Edgar Martinez became the Seattle Mariners hitting coach. So now the key behind this is what makes the difference between Julio Rodriguez being a superstar and just being an above average player. And like I said, that is consistency. That is being able to put together like someone like Bobby Witt, who I believe Julio can be in the same category as he's just not right now, is just putting together that entire season. Just being able to hit for high average, hit for power, not strike out a ton, and just put together a full season. Like I said, people are going to slump. Bobby Witt Jr. is currently slumping. 
So, you know, there's those are things that are just going to happen in the sport of baseball. But that is the one thing that differentiates Julio Rodriguez being a superstar every single year versus just being an above average player. But there is one theory that I kind of want to debunk a little bit here, and maybe his 2023 stats will not, but definitely his 2024 stats will. And that is, is Julio Rodriguez a clutch baseball player? So for those of you who don't know, there's a statistic called high leverage. And basically what a high leverage situation is, it's an AB where the win expectancy has the potential to move dramatically based on the outcome. So, you know, you have a runner on second in the bottom of the eighth inning, your team's down a run. That is a high leverage AB. So basically... I'm going to read you some of the stats that Julio has in these high leverage situations because a lot of Mariner fans continue to hate on him and say he is not a clutch baseball player. So 2024 is definitely his worst statistical season, but in terms of clutch, it's actually one of his best. So he has 47 plate appearances in high leverage situations where he has three home runs, 18 RBIs, a 318 batting average, and a 158 WRC+. plus. So yeah, that debunks that whether he is clutch this season or not, he is a 318 average and a 150 plus WRC plus is absolutely insane in clutch situations. So yes, in 2024, Julio Rodriguez is clutch. Now, going back to the main topic of this video, and that is inconsistency. So last season, he had a much better offensive season statistically than he is having this season. But in high leverage, he's been inconsistent last year. So last year in high leverage, he had 80 plate appearances where he had three home runs, 21 RBIs, only a 242 average, and a 127 WRC+. So those numbers, again, are not bad statistical numbers. But at the end of the day, those are not as clutch as he's been this year, which has been probably not even probably it is his worst offensive season. So in case you guys haven't figured it out, the name of the game is consistency for him. And even in clutch situations, like I just read off to you, you know, 2023, he had a great offensive year, but eh, in clutch situations. Now this year, he's not really having that great of an offensive season, but he's being one of the best he's ever been in clutch situations. So again, it's just that Julio Rodriguez just needs to put it all together. So just in my personal opinion, based on some of the tweets and comments I've been seeing is please stop hating on Julio Rodriguez. He has done nothing but be awesome for this franchise. And yes, he is, he's an up and down player. He does things that make you angry like the other night getting picked off at third base to basically end the game. Yes, those things are going to happen. He's young. He makes mistakes. He's going to figure that stuff out. He is just this much shorter of matching F war of Juan Soto and Mookie Betts through their first three full seasons. So yes, Julio Rodriguez is fine. He is young. He's going to figure it out and he's just going to continue to get better. So the hate comments are a little bit annoying in terms of if you're going to make a comment, at least back it up with stats saying, Julio Rodriguez isn't clutch. Well, in 2024, he actually is very clutch based on statistics. So that's just one thing I kind of wanted to get out there and just, yes, Julio is inconsistent. He is very frustrating at times, but he will figure it out. But please let me know your guys' thoughts on the inconsistencies of Julio Rodriguez and what he really needs to do to solidify himself as a superstar. But otherwise, I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.